E we back. I'm here talking about polar coordinates today, and that is because I got a question in my Discord server the other day asking about them. So hi Thomas, and what Thomas said was that polar coordinates seemed they were kind of random. They were just estimating stuff. They were confusing, and all the rest of it. So I said I would happily make a video about polar coordinates, and here we are. Before we talk about polar coordinates, I'm going to talk about miles and kilometers. As you see, I have here the ratio of one mile to one kilometer. You can very easily see that if you have one mile, representing it as a kilometer, it seems very random and stupid. Why would you ever do that? It's just an estimation. It's, it's ridiculous. Kilometers are clearly useless. But equally, we can swap these around and try and represent one kilometer as a mile, you get the same done result. It turns out both of these measurements are completely valid and people are perfectly happy to use either of them. But comparing one to another results in some pretty silly numbers that don't make a whole lot of sense. The thing is, this is actually the same situation for polar coordinates. The difference being that with miles and kilometers, everyone is kind of used to them and knows what they mean. Whereas with maths, people only really use Cartesian coordinates, which is the kind of coordinates that you're going to be used to. If I type into Desmos here, two, three, what we are going to get is a Cartesian coordinate, which is measured by going along the x-axis, the first number, and going up the y-axis, the second number, and then you reach this coordinate here at two, three. Polar coordinates is just a different way of representing the same thing, that being a point on this graph. So for example, I could have a polar coordinate at 145, and what that would be at 45 degree angle above the x-axis and one away which is going to be like here somewhere right now unfortunately on desmos you cannot actually input polar coordinates because they don't have a system for it but I've managed to find a workaround, and that is using this formula here, which I will explain in a second. But pretend this is your r value. r is the first value in a radian coordinates. Normally you'd have x comma y. Now you have r comma, and this is theta. It's just two different symbols for representing the same thing. And so your r value is the distance away from the... 0, 0 point. So we have R1 here, and then we could move that up, say, to R2, which is around there. You can keep moving it up. If we go into negative, it'll go in the other direction. And then I've set A to 45. Like I say, this is at the angle above the x-axis. So as in increasing that, it goes round in a circle, right? All the way back to 360. Now, polar coordinates are typically represented with radians rather than degrees, but that's just the same thing again, it's like the miles and the kilometers, it is a different way of representing degrees. And so in radians, you would have two pi radians in a full circle. I'm not going to talk about them today because you can just ignore them and use degrees. But it's worth mentioning that polar coordinates are usually measured in radians, as a lot of maths is, once you get to a higher level. Despite polar coordinates being actually the same as Cartesian coordinates, they're not really taught until a higher level, and this is why people don't recognize them so much. So let's first start understanding this formula here, and this is actually some very basic trigonometry. So let's suppose we plot our point 2, 3 back along here. What if we wanted to work out the coordinates that this point is at in polar coordinates? Well, we could draw ourselves a little triangle, which I have attempted to do very haphazardly here using the line x equals 2, y equals 3, and y equals 2, uh, 3 halves x, which as you see, these all cross through this point here. So in order to get the co polar coordinates of this point, what we need to do for the r value is find the length of this line here, which we can do with Sokotoa or the sine rule or whatever else you fancy. Then in order to find the theta value, you need to find this angle here, which the same applies. You can use Sokotoa, you can use the sine rule, whatever you fancy. At the end of the day, this is just a 
right angled triangle. You already know that this side is length 2, this side, sorry, this side is length 3, and this angle is 90 degrees. And once you've got three pieces of information like that, you can find out anything about a triangle. Technically, this depends, you have to have at least one side and uh, whatever. But with that information, you can find everything about the angle. You can calculate uh, this angle, this angle, and this side length very easily. And I'm not going to explain how you do that in this video. That's soccer toe or whatever. You can also do the reverse. So let's suppose you knew the length of this side here, which is R, and you knew the angle of this angle here, theta, you could then calculate the length of this side and the length of this side. So this would be converting the polar coordinates back to Cartesian coordinates. And this is where our little formula comes in, because if you are given the side length of this and the angle of this as theta, the length of this line, which is x, is r cos theta, and the length of this line is r sine theta, which is what gets us to this point here with the r cos theta. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually let us write theta in here, so I've used a, and r sine a. So what this is actually doing is just automatically converting polar coordinates back into Cartesian coordinates. So if you were to write this here in polar coordinates, it would just be 3.5 comma 55. But to write it in Cartesian coordinates, you get the 3.5, multiply it by cosine of 55, and that is your x coordinate, and then with sine is your y coordinate. So if you were doing it in the reverse, you'd have like um, anti-sine, anti-cos, and, and maybe divides and whatever. I, I, I don't know the formula off the top of my head, but you just reverse this, right? You reverse the formula, and then you've converted it back. On Desmos, what we can actually do is we can go into settings here and make the whole grid polar coordinates, which makes this a lot easier to visualize. We've got the radius here, which is basically what R is. So we could set that to four, for example, almost, almost. There we go, and it's on this little four dash. And then we've got the angle here, which obviously just runs along that line. So that's kind of nice. And again, we, we could still set up the triangle and try and convert this into car Cartesian coordinates using this kind of formula, which is what it's actually doing in order to plot that. Now, let me give another example. I'm going to just quickly type out the formula for a circle, because, of course, polar coordinates are not just for coordinates. It's a coordinate system. You can do anything with it. And so you can use formulas as well. So here we have x squared plus y squared equals 9. This is a very simple circle. It has the center at 0, 0, and it has a radius of 3. If you're not sure about the uh, formula for a circle, it is this. And then this is radius squared, which is why we have radius 3, even though I wrote 9. If we want to move the circle slightly, we can do it like this. For example, minus 1 will move it 1 to the right, minus 3 would move it 3 to the right. Uh, this is, see, minus the center of the circle. Uh, so we can do that if we want, but I'm just going to leave it as x squared plus y squared equals 9. Now let's try for a second converting this equation to polar coordinates. We can use the same formula as before. So instead of x, what I'm going to write is r cos a. And we can, we can put that in brackets there like that. And then the y coordinate is going to be r sine a. Now what we can notice is that we get some cancelling out here. Because if we take this squared and move it to the r and the cos like that. Ooh, messing around with brackets now. Uh, and then we can do the same with this one here. r squared and sine squared like that, and then we can factorize this to take the r squared out, like this. Just doing some excellently demonstrated simplification there. So we've taken the r out, and what we have is cos squared a plus sine squared a. Now, if you know much about trigonometry, you'll know that this equals 1. All of that just equals 1. We can get rid of it, and look what we find r squared equals 9, which is just then the formula for a circle in polar coordinates. We can remove the square on each side, we get 
r equals 3, um, and Desmos actually will represent that as a graph, now that it is in the form of r. And what we have, if you remember, I know it hasn't been displaying the circle the whole time, but this is the exact same circle that we had before, r equals 3. Because of course it is. If you plot a graph of r equals 3 as polar coordinates, it's just going to be a line around here. Equally, if you did a plot of, say, theta equals 45, it's just going to go through here. Now, unfortunately, Desmos really doesn't like theta, and it's not going to let me plot a graph of theta equals 45, but we can still do the maths to prove it. In order to do that, let's do the same thing again. We're going to replace our y and our x with their polar coordinate forms, which is going to be for x, it is a co sorry r cos a, and for y, we have r sine a. We can then divide r off both sides, and then we can divide both sides by cos. This would make this a 0, and sine a divided by cos a equals tan a like that, and then we just have to solve for a. I'll tell you that when a equals 45, the uh, solution is equal to zero, so a equals 45, and therefore the graph of theta equals 45 is going to be the same as y equals x. Unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's not going to let us plot that. I can try by typing theta equals 45, but it doesn't like it. But just trust me, this is going to be a line of, of y equals x. We've, we've just done the maths to prove it. So, converting between the two systems isn't too hard. What's the benefit of using these polar coordinates? Well, you could argue there is no benefit, because actually it's just the same thing either way. It's slightly easier to represent some graphs and slightly harder to represent others. But we can still play around with it in Desmos. For example, we could make uh, a graph of r equals theta, and we get something wacky looking like that. Look, it's a spiral. Now that kind of thing is a little harder to represent with Cartesian coordinates, isn't it? If we wanted, we could do the maths and discover exactly how to represent this with Cartesian coordinates, but I, I ain't doing all of that. We've had two examples already. But there you go, with simply r equals theta, we get a spiral like that. We can do wacky things with trigonometry. We add a sine in, r equals sine theta, and we've got ourselves a circle. But then say we try sine 2 theta, for example, we've just now got two little bips instead of just one. Try 3 theta, and we've got 3, 4, and these are making a bunch of uh, really nice symmetrical shapes here. We, we, we could go on for ages and get a really weird and funky shape. We could try squaring the sine, and then look, it's only done the top half. There's a bunch of wacky stuff that you can do with polar coordinates. And it's realistically exactly the same as the wacky stuff you can do with Cartesian coordinates. It's just that it's represented differently, and so plotting something like this with polar coordinates is very easy, whereas if you wanted to plot this with Cartesian coordinates, the formula for it is probably going to be very complicated. Uh, equally, if you wanted to plot a graph of something simple like y equals 4x plus 2, and then suddenly with polar coordinates, it's a lot harder to do something like that. The formula is going to be a, a bit more complicated. At the end of the day, it is just a different way of representing stuff, and I would recommend you go on to something like Desmos and have a, a play around with it if you're not too sure. Uh, but yeah, like I say, it's just a different way of representing coordinates. Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates are exactly the same thing. Converting between them isn't too hard, it's just some basic Sokotoa, and if you are confused about it, and that's why you're watching the video, then it, it basically just comes down to the fact that you are not taught it at schools. And whereas with miles and kilometers, like I say, you're used to both, you can, you're happy to use both and you know what both means, because in schools they only ever teach you Cartesian coordinates, finding out about polar ones and seeing what wacky shapes they make suddenly confuses everyone, despite the fact that they're actually just the exact same thing. Anyway, that's basically all I wanted to say for this one, so I'm gonna end this video here. Bye!